Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California, and we're having our monthly tech meet here today, and we're going to be looking at a 1967 Silver Shadow block and talking about the cylinders and the crankshaft and all that kind of stuff. This engine is out of a 67. It's out of that drop head right there that's primer. That car is one of mine, and uh, it's the first year for the drop head that's called a 1967 Silver Shadow Molnar Park Ward Drop Head Coupe. The VIN number is 3174, and the block indicates the same back here. So this is numbers matching for those of you who think that that's really important. Um, this was started many years ago, that restoration, and then the guy went to jail and I ended up with the car. So I'm revisiting it. I know that we tried to save money on anywhere we could on it. The cylinders are kind of worn on this, the crankshaft, but now that it's mine, I'm going to fix it right. So this is a four and a quarter liter, I think, or six and a quarter liter. Uh, it's a short stroke engine, and their stroke is, where did it go? Da, 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 da. It's 4.1 bore. That's in the cylinder. Here is a replacement cylinder. These cylinders are cast iron. The engine is aluminum. And this is a new one right here. So this diameter is 4.1 inches. The pistons are almost exactly the same. There's one to two thousandths, maybe. This cylinder has to go in the block, and as you can see, this is a wet sleeve block. So if you guys want to look in here, uh, somebody grab me one of those flashlights on the end of that top box. So, oops, I went too far. So if you look inside here, you'll see that there are some O-rings in there. There's one, one, um, oops. Watch that camera, I don't want to break it. There's one of these. Let's do this. This is a really clean block, to be honest with you. So the upper one is small. You guys can see that. And that traps the coolant to keep it from going around. And then down below is another O ring right there. Now that's kind of oval, it's kind of flat and wide. That keeps the coolant from going down. And then there's one more O-ring. If you look in here, you guys can get close if you need to. Just watch your head, which is the same as the other one. And that keeps the engine oil out. So if you look at the side of the block, a lot of people wonder what a weep hole is. This is a weep hole. Well, if you see water coming out of that, you will cry, I promise you, because that means, th the idea of this weep hole is, should that lower O-ring fail that holds the coolant in, it can escape and not go into the crankcase. But typically, uh, these engines are old and these O-rings crack. I've seen many, many, many of these cars leaking oil from here which is not abnormal, it happens. So there's two ways to fix it. You either take the engine all the way apart like this, pull the sleeves, put new O-rings in, or I have, so long as there's no coolant coming out, I have taken little drift plugs, put some sealant in there and drive them in there, and that'll stop your engine oil leak. The only danger to doing that is if you have a coolant O-ring go bad, then it's just going to go right into the crankcase. Uh, what causes that? Old age, not changing coolant, overheating. It's really not good for these cars. Um, and any questions on that? Hmm? Uh, under normal conditions, how long? How it long should last as long as the engine lasts, provided the car is serviced. The problem with the coolant um, is over time it degrades and 
there's a thing called electrolysis that anytime you have <laughs> dissimilar metals together, cast iron, aluminum, it's, there's going to be a transference eventually. Um, the early cars even, the, on the cooling systems, they have ground straps to the radiators to help slow down that electrolysis just from the battery. It, it's, it's interesting how it can do that. So if you change your coolant every two, three years, I think it's four years, I think, on these cars where you're supposed to change it every four years. And most people don't do all that. Maybe it's two. It depends on the year model, really. Uh, this, this car, for example, if you go in the Rolls-Royce, look at their actual scheduled maintenance, I think at 12 years you're supposed to replace all the brake hoses, right? This thing had the original ones on. I just did them this week. Uh, it's a 1987, and it, this is a 21,000-mile car, so it's not like it's been beat up. He services it regularly, but we're doing brake work on it. Calipers start leaking. Yeah, so we might as well do this. I don't always agree with all that over service because some of those services, if you have a car for two years and you get a $10,000 service bill, it just most people just go, what? Right? But that's the way Rolls-Royce wanted stuff done. This is a quality aftermarket from, I get that from Flying Spares from the UK. The factory ones aren't that bad. They used to be 200 and something dollars each, times eight, right? Pistons, I priced pistons for this car. I'm pretty sure the pistons are good on this. I measured those up. But they're like $700 each, times eight. Right, it gets serious. And on the Rolls-Royce and Bentley, on the V8s, I do not use aftermarket pistons. Uh, I watched my father, who owned this place for 20-something years, uh, try many times over and over to buy racing pistons, Vinolia. He had some Vinolias made, and then there were some others that he had made. 